Today we're going to look at section 5.3, which is solving linear equations. An equation is when we have two expressions set equal to one another. And the key there is that you have an equal sign. An equal sign is what makes it an equation. If we have this here, 5x plus 2, this is just an expression. And we can simplify expressions. And we've done enough of this uh, throughout uh, 085 here that we understand using PEMDAS. Uh, maybe we know the analogy, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, where P stands for parentheses or any grouping symbol. E is exponents. Multiplication and division can be done in either one first, uh, as long as we do it from left to right. And then we'd move on to add addition or subtraction, in which we do those from left to right as well. So we know how to simplify expressions. We've worked on these in previous uh, videos. When it comes to an equation, here we have 5x plus 2. And it's set equal to the expression of this constant, which in this case is 0. So we have this equal sign. This is an equation. How do we go about solving equations? Well, we know we simplify expressions using uh, order of operations. To solve an equation, we use order of operations, but in a different order. Because here, we were doing the math that we could do. Here, we want to undo the math to solve for the variable. We want to do all, undo all the math that's being done to x. And how we do that is first, we eliminate any parentheses. Then we use a reverse order of operations. We'll undo any addition or subtraction. We'll undo any multiplication or division. And at this level of math, we're not going to have to undo any exponents. So um, maybe you want to develop your own uh, mnemonic device for equations. But uh, we were brainstorming this morning, and we came up with pandas are endangered. That makes for a sad me. So don't be a sad panda. Be able to solve equations. So let's move over here and actually apply uh, a reverse order of operations. The first thing I do when looking at this e equation is I identify it is an equation, has an equal sign, so I can solve for the unknown, the variable. The first thing I do is assess it and say, are there any parentheses that I might be able to eliminate using simplification? Well, no, no parentheses in here. So now I'm going to undo order of operations. I'm going to undo any addition or subtraction. And I look here and I see we have addition. Well, how can I undo addition? I can use subtraction. And we're going to use those properties of equality. What we do to one side, we do to the other. If I subtract 4 from one side, I have to subtract 4 from the other. Now, 4 minus 4 is 0. So I have x and 0. Well, that's just x. And here I have negative 4 and negative 6. They're the same sign, so I'm going to combine. It's going to give me negative 10. x is negative 10. I solve the equation. The nice thing about equations is we can always check our work. We can know that we have the right answer. I'm going to take this negative 10 and put it back in. Do an evaluation. Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. Is this a true statement? Well, these have different signs, so I'm going to find their difference. The difference of 10 and 4 is 6. The larger value is negative, so that would be a negative 6. Is negative 6 equal to negative 6? Yes, it is. Let's move on to the next one here. We have negative 2x equals 36. So I'm going to do an assessment. There are no parentheses. So now I'm going to undo order of operations. There is no addition or subtraction because we just have a term equal to another term. So I move on and I look, well, OK, I see multiplication. Negative 2 times x is 36. I can undo this multiplication using its opposite operation, division. So I'm going to divide by this coefficient. I have negative 2, so I'm going to divide by negative 2 because we know how to identify coefficients. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. That's that property of equality. What we do to one side, we do to the other. Well, negative 2 over negative 2, if we assess it one piece at a time, a negative divided by a negative is positive, And 2 divided by 2 is 1. Or we can think of it as this integer of negative 2 
is divided by itself. Anything divided by itself is 1. So this reduces to 1x, or just x. Now here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to assess a positive over a negative is negative, And 36 divided by 2 is 18. x equals negative 18. Now I want to check my work, so I'm going to put it in. Negative 2 times negative 18 equals 36. Well, is this a true statement? Negative times a negative is positive. 36 is positive. 2 times 18 is 36. A positive 36 from this value, that's a true statement. I checked my work. I know that that's the right answer. Sometimes when we're solving equations, we have to assess them and say, well, I have an x over here and an x over here. I want my x's to be together. So a rule of, that I follow is always move the smaller value of the coefficient. And the reason why I do that is because sometimes we struggle with negatives, and we don't want to make those sign errors. And by moving the smaller value, you'll not have a negative coefficient. So I look at this and I assess it. OK, well, I just have an x term over here and an x term over here. I want to get them on the same side. Which side really doesn't matter. Because if I get x equals a number, well, a number equal to x, the order doesn't matter. There's, it's still a true statement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this is smaller. So I'm going to move it over here. And I do that by taking it away from this side. What I do to one side? I have to do to the other, that property of equality. Well, 4x minus 4x is 0. And 5x minus 4x is 1, or just x. Well, by doing that, I've simplified it. Even though my x is on this side, 0 equals x is the same thing as x equals 0. So let's, let's plug it back into the original equation to see if it's a true statement. 4 times 0 is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 0 equals 0. That's a true statement. What if we have a fraction? Or maybe we just think of it as division. Well, <clears throat> there's two ways we can approach this. We can uh, look at it as we have division here. So let's undo it using multiplication. There is no addition or subtraction. We have a negative x over 4 equals a negative 30. If I think of this as just division, I can undo that with multiplication. I'm going to multiply by this value. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So now 4 times this value, if I think of this as being 4 over 1, this 4 will cancel that 4. So I have 1 times a negative x. Well, that gives me a negative x. And negative 30 times 4 is negative 120. Now if we look at this, if we identify the coefficient, the coefficient is negative 1 times x equals negative 120. Well, that's multiplication. And I can undo that by dividing by a negative 1, because I identified the coefficient to be negative 1x. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. Well, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we get x equals a positive 120. If we plug this back in, negative 120 divided by 4, well, 120 divided by 4 is 30. Negative 30 equals negative 30 in the original equation. So it does check out. Now, I said there was another way to look at it. And let's do it. A second way, we'll get the same answer. So it's really up to you which way you want to look at this. Identify the whole coefficient of x. Don't think of it as just what operation. Say, well, this is 1 over 4. So I have a negative 1 fourth. I can undo that negative 1 fourth by multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 4 over 1. Using this method, we actually Combine two of the steps from the previous one into one, meth one step. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, a negative times a negative is a positive, And the 4 will reduce the 4, just as it did before. So a negative times a negative is a positive, And this is 1x, so a positive x. A negative times a negative 
is a positive. 4 times 30 is 120. 120 divided by 1 is still 120. So by doing that, I combine the two steps into 1, and I got x equals 120. Notice that's the exact same thing we got last time. And we already checked that, so we know that it works. All right, and here, this one is very similar to the last one, just depending on what perspective you look at. This one, if we put the x in the denominator, it's just like the last one. But here, we can see, OK, I am multiplying by 2 fifths. I can undo multiplication with division of that coefficient. Well, how do we divide by a fraction? We end up multiplying by its reciprocal. And that's what we did in step two over there. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I'm multiplying by 5 halves, I have to multiply the other side by 5 halves. And here we see the 2's reduced to 1, the 5's reduced to 1. 1 times 1 times x is just 1x. And here we have 10 times 5 halves. Well, I'm going to reduce 2 and 5, or 2 goes into 10 5 times. So now I have 5 times 5 over 1, which is just 5 times 5, 25. So x equals 25. I can check that, plug it back into, into the original. 2 fifths times 25 equals 10. Let's see if this is a true statement. 5 goes into 25 5 times. 2 times 5 is 10. True statement. Now here, we've seen something similar to this in this example down here. Here we just have the expression of negative x equals the, the term or constant 45. Well, this is not solved for x. We have to realize that that's a negative coefficient. We want to find out what x is, not the opposite of x. So what I have to realize is what I'm actually doing here is I have a negative 1 as its coefficient. And I'm multiplying, so I can undo that with division. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So negative 1 over negative 1 is just 1. A negative over a negative is positive. So we get x equals 45 divided by negative 1. A positive over a negative is negative 45. So if we review this, a negative x equals 45. So a positive x equals negative 45. The opposite of x is 45. So x is the opposite of 45. One way to look at it. And checking that, well, a negative times a negative is a positive. And that's what that would show if we checked it. All right, sometimes our u's, just like in this example, our variables, we're using u instead of x. Sometimes the variables will change. Maybe they'll be y or m or n or some other letter, we see they're on two sides of the equation. Well, we want everything to be on one side of the equation and then equal to the numbers on the other side. So we want to get our variables together. So I'm going to use that rule I used in the other example. What is the lesser value, 6 or 1? Well, 1's less than 6, so I'm going to move this value. I'm going to subtract a u from this side. Well, what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I have 6u minus 1u would leave me with 5u's. And then I just bring down the rest of the problem. u minus u is 0u's, or 0 plus 18 is a positive 18. Now, it's very similar to ones we've seen before. I can get u by itself. I can undo the math. I'm going to add 7 to both sides, because I want to undo this subtraction. And I get negative 7 plus 7 is 0. 5u and 0 is just 5u. 18 and 7 is 25. And now let me move this out of the way here. 5u equals 25. I see that this is multiplication. 5 times u will be 25. I can undo that multiplication using division. So 5 over 5 is 1. So we get u equals 25 divided by 5 is 5. So now we have u equals 5. We found the solution. We always check our work. Go to the original problem. So let's look at this original. 6 times 5, and I'll just write it up here, is 30. Minus 7 equals 
5, you, I have to put u in everywhere I see a u, I put in the solution, 5 plus 18. Well, 5 plus 18 is going to give me 23. 30 minus 7 also gives me 23. 23 equals 23. I checked my work. Now, <clears throat> the one I erased here was x plus 15 equals 8. Try this one on your own and uh, see what you get. And remember, check your work.